Christ spoke to God about them in chapter 17 of John's Gospel. Verse 11. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name so that they may be one as we are one. And further, verse 23. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you loved me. Christ prayed that we would all understand God's love for us all. And after Christ, the division in the early church was great. This was a time when the early Christians lost some of their faith, some of what Jesus had taught them. The Apostle Paul wrote about it in many of his numerous letters. The early division, to me, is why Paul had to write those letters. If all was going well for them, his letters probably would have been different. The theme of the letters was very consistent, almost to the point where Paul simply copied and pasted from one letter to another. To the Christians in Rome, he wrote, chapter 12, 5 and 6. So in Christ, we, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. And further on in his letter to Rome, chapter 15, 5 and 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of your Lord Jesus. Accept one another then just as Christ accepted you. In Paul's first letter to Corinth, chapter 10, 16, 17, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. And further in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, what Pam read for us this morning, the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now today, if Paul were writing this, would he even perhaps add, whether Methodist or Lutheran, Baptist or Presbyterian, Dunker or Sprinkler? In Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, 28, he writes again even the same exact words. He, he must have had copy and paste real early on. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all. And further in that chapter, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Paul saw that the divisions in the church were starting to show. He knew that he needed to instruct them in the healing process that continues yet today. But all was not lost, my friends. It was not inevitable that the early church would remain divided. Paul actually gives them and us today hope for one church in his letter to the Colossians, chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances 
you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And all is not lost for our modern times either. The ecumenical movement is alive and well, but there is still much work to be done to achieve one church in God through Christ. In the late 19th century, well after Christ and the apostles told us to be united, many organizations sprung up to make that unity come true, such as the YM and YWCAs, the Federal Council of Churches of Christ, the church reunion in Great Britain, and Christian unity in the U.S. And in the early 20th century, groups like World Missionary Conference, the International Missionary Council, and the Universal Christian Conference on Life and Work were started. And in the late 20th century, as we, we see the forming of the World Council of Churches that to this day does a lot to bring unity among the still many denominations. And progress has been made to the one church in some mergers in the late 20th century, including our own denomination when the, United Meth when the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren joined hands. And we here in Lakeside have many opportunities to show our desire for one church when we host so many people of the Chautauqua season who come so, from so many different Christian denominations and traditions. But much work is still to be done. Yes, today we are seeing some of the same divisions for various reasons, some of the same threats of separation that have plagued the church since its inception. As the recent United Methodist promotional campaign indicates, perhaps it's time we rethink church. It's an initiative to start a conversation at all levels designed to open a global dialogue about reaching spiritual seekers with the good news of Jesus Christ. It stems from the one question, what if we rethink church? It's not rethinking our theology or rethinking the scriptures, but rethinking the way the church makes contact with the world. Beyond buildings and Sunday worship and into an active presence in the world to bring the good news of Christ to all. What if we rethink church? Not in terms of what it is, but what it could be. And what if we convinced the world to do the same? Perhaps we could get to the one church that Christ and the apostles spoke about 2,000 years ago. And tonight, we here on the peninsula have the chance to join other Christians of the peninsula of other traditions in Christian unity. The event at St. Paul's Lutheran Church tonight is the annual Christian unity event, including a potluck dinner and informal discussions of each church's history current ministry, and future hopes. I would dare say that a potluck is one issue where all Christians of all traditions will agree. We may disagree on how we express our love for God and Christ during our worship services, but who is going to disagree with green bean casserole and jello salad? <laughs> Although I'm taking... Uh, baked beans and pasta salad. So. so please join me and your brothers and sisters in Christ tonight at 6 o'clock at St. Paul's Lutheran Church on Church Road. It is a potluck, so please bring a dish to share. And every day, when you come across someone of a different tradition, remember the love of Christ and the grace of God are there for them as well as you. Amen.